What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Queen Steez and I am back with another video. So, y'all like the review I did on P-Valley last week. So, guess what? I am back with episode six. Y'all had me down in the comments falling out. Y'all told me that my first review was giving Uncle Cliff from Baltimore. Y'all <laughs> said that I was giving the people what they can feel. So here I am back, you know, <laughs> with another review. Hopefully you guys like this one. To all my new subscribers, welcome, welcome, welcome to the channel. Check out some of my story times and some of my other videos. I promise that you will not be disappointed over here. So, y'all, episode 6 was called Savage. As we know, this episode was really, really, really heavy. They really got into some things. So, you know, if you want to hear what I got to say about everything that is going on with P-Valley, then make sure you stick around for the rest of the video. So y'all, the episode opens up playing my song. First, you gotta put your into it. Don't stop, just do it, do it. I'm like, okay, what do they got going on? So from the looks of things, you really can't tell who it is, you know, doing that thing. So I'm looking like, who is that? Because we know that this whole season of P-Valley, everybody been, you know, dibbling and dabbling and everything. But it goes to show that it is Diamond and Big Bone. So we already know, you know, that they was going to end up hooking up. Because she already told him in the last episode and was like, you know, follow Big Mama home. She gave him the helmet, you know, so come over to my place. Come on over to my place. Period. So we see Diamond and Big Bone, you know, doing that thing or whatever. So Diamond gets up and Big Bone like, you know, why you ain't, you know, giving me that thing you know that she won and he was like look all men should know you know not to plant their seed everywhere and she like well i ain't trying to have your baby and all that but we know what diamond was referring to because diamond is a root worker for those who don't know diamond is a root worker we call it roots so yeah diamond works the roots so of course you already know that he's not giving anyone you know his body fluids so i thought that you know that was unique we seen that this season they've been getting like a lot into spirituality showing like a uh, root work and all that stuff which is not unpopular in the south so i really like that they were you know getting into that y'all as far as this girl big bone she tell me what y'all think about big bone i really think that she is from montavious's crew and that someone sent her there because, like, listen, just hit me out. So, granted, we can't say that, you know, she's not inquisitive. But all she literally does is, like, sit around and lurk. And just listen to what people saying. And then she just asks just a bunch of questions. But anyway, while she was in the Diamond's house, I felt like she was about to start snooping around. Which we do know that she did see the ring of Montavia sitting there. Honestly... Honestly, honestly, honestly. Ben and she said that she was from Texas, right? She randomly pops up for these auditions. She can't dance to become a stripper, so why would you even go there? That's what's making me think that someone from Montavious's crew back in Texas has sent her there to, you know, find out what's going on, what happened to Montavious, because he never returned. We know that he is, like, the head of, you know, the little gang or whatever that he's in back in Texas. So, she's sitting there, you know, snooping around. So, Diamond told her, like, look, you want to grow two heads, two legs, and all of this stuff. Like, don't touch stuff that, you know, you shouldn't be touching, right? So, she's like, that wouldn't be a good look. But, honestly, I just feel like she's just kind of playing it off. But, she's trying to get, you know, more information. So, let's not forget the fact. Granted, I know that Diamond likes Big Bone. Do y'all think that Diamond like Big Bone? I already think, I don't know. Maybe she could be just passing time because we know that you know why they was doing the do. He was looking at Big Bone 
but he was imagining Miss Keyshawn. So we already know that he is in love with Keyshawn, but he's still mad at her, you know, because she's still with Dirk, but she got to come around to that in her own time. So that's really my thoughts on that whole thing. I feel like Big Bone cannot be trusted, so we're going to have to stick around to see what's up with her, but I don't, mm -mm, I don't really like her, girl. What you talking about? So the next part of the episode, we go over to the Gucci gang. That's why I'm going to call them the Gucci gang, because I don't know what they be giving, but y'all, I just be cracking up at these outfits and all of this stuff. It's definitely giving down south. Whoever is on wardrobe, y'all are definitely giving me down south. So the Gucci gang pull up, you know, Lil Murder pulls up, Big Teak is out there, they're throwing a party for Big Teak, you know, coming home, they're trying to welcome him home, but we all know that, you know, Big Teak is just, he's really been struggling this entire season, but Lil Murder pulls up with a new whip, and as we can see, Teak is just like in a trance, like, he's here in the physical but he's not really here mentally so they made sure to show him you know kind of in the trance kind of being zoned out and then on murders like yo like what's up like you know they got in this car um so they just you know bigging him up saying all the stuff you know that he's done for the gang and they just want to show the boy love they got the girls out there they popping they twerking we are you already know they're playing this thing like they're homeboys and all this stuff and honestly to me i don't see how other people don't see it because i just be cracking up like watching those two interact with each other like it's just it's really funny. But I'll, I'm going to get into so, that. So, as Lil Murder's talking and he's welcoming Teak, he's letting him know, you know, like, we glad you back. And he says that not everybody that was once in the dark makes it to the light. So, I think it was a lot of foreshadowing in this episode for what did come later. But we know that while Big Teak was locked up, he was in the hole a lot. And, you know, he was just dealing with a lot, a lot, a lot of dark things. So, in talking to him, Lil Murder gives him the car keys. He gets in the car and he breaks down. So, with this, Lil Murder knows that Teak is not okay. So, y'all, I found this to be... Y'all, that interaction is be so funny to me. It, it, it gives, like, boyfriend and girlfriend. But it's, like, two gangsters. So, I think that's what's making it funny. And whoever wrote this, like, really made sure that they played those dynamics out. So, you know, Murder is, like, you know... Look, I'm going to just roll with you for the day. And Teek is kind of like, mm. he's like, all right, come on. Because, of course, we know he wants to spend time with Lil' Murder. Like, even though, you know, they discuss the Clifford stuff and all of that, we know he wants to spend time with him. So, they go to roll around the city So, together. the next thing that we go to is back at the pink. So, y'all, Big L and Uncle Cliff, y'all, Uncle Cliff is sitting on the steps because he is pissed. I don't know who want to get a piece of Autumn Nightmare, as he called her, more. I don't know who's more pissed at her, Uncle Cliff or Corbin, because they are both on their last leg with her. Like, they won it with Autumn, okay? Y'all, shout out to whoever is doing Uncle Cliff's outfits. I've been loving all the outfits. Every time it come on, I just gotta see what you Uncle Cliff got on, because Uncle Clifford is giving the grass fashions honey so he had a cute little sweatsuit on with his jaw and ones had his little bobby pins and y'all it is oh my goodness it's so funny but anyway you know autumn is has been living in the pink and you know Uncle Clifford is like girl we know you own the club but dang you living up in here too so y'all they was being smart they cut the water off on her while she was taking a shower so of course she got mad and she come out there so uncle Clifford is trying to figure out what is her next move? We know that Autumn is very, very, very sneaky and she cannot be trusted. You just never know whose side this girl was on. But Autumn seems like she's only out, you know, to help one person and that is herself. So Uncle Clifford finds this ballroom girl. He's like, <laughs> what do you have planned tonight? So she's like, look, I ain't playing with y'all. Give me my dress. Leave me alone. So, Big L and Uncle Clifford goes back to the back, and they're having a conversation. So, the conversation, they pretty much like, you know what, we need to get rid of this girl. Well, Big L is really like, you know, we can't get rid of her because we got blood on our hands, but it's no blood on her hands. So, in this whole thing with them doing Montavious and 
Autumn is, oh my goodness, Autumn is very, very, very clever. She didn't have anything to do with, she got all of them to fight her battle. So, so I'm so just thinking know. back, who actually uh, put Montavious in the dirt? Who actually murked Montavious? Because I don't remember, did Uncle Cliff pull it? Or did Diamond pull it? Or did Mercedes? Mercedes did, because Mercedes had a seven pound on her shoulder. Y'all, it's so much going on in this season. But anyway, the main point of this was they was like, you know what? Dang, this girl that came all the way down here, she done gained all of us to where we got blood on our hands. And she ain't have nothing. So if anything ever comes back, all of them can say, I ain't had nothing to do with that. I, I didn't. Because what did she do? All she did was really get into a fight with them. They're the ones who put in all the work. So I was like, dang. When he said that, I was like, yo, Autumn Night Strikes again. That girl is really, really clever. So we got to see what else she has up her so sleeve. The next thing we get back to is Big Teak and Murder. So we know that they just riding around. They chilling. They getting it. So now they get the barber shop. Teak is getting his hair cut. Um, you know, he getting real fresh. This is welcome back. He got a new whip. So while they're there, Lord Murder gets a call from none other than Miss Mississippi. So he goes to take the phone call. Keyshawn is basically trying to tell him, like, look, um, some things happened while we were there. And we already know that, um, Lord Murder has been inquisitive about what happened to Rome. He's like, dad, like, you know, that's crazy that... He just dropped like that. So, the barber, you know, was like, you know, was it from the, from that Rona? He like, no, nah, we don't really know what happened, but it's just very awkward. So, Mississippi let him know what Rome tried to do while they was there. And when she kind of gets to the point where she's letting him know, like, you know, Rome know about you. Of course, none other than Derek walks in, cramping her style, like who you want to phone with. She hangs up the phone on him. So... He doesn't really know that it's a video out there, but he knows that someone other than the close-knit circle knows about him. So, that is heavy on his mind. He's stressing about it, and he's he, he just outside just like, yo, like, trying to figure out, you know, what's going to happen and all of this. And then it goes to the next scene. So, as Murder sitting out there thinking, of course, he looks puzzled and troubled. Lil Tick is coming out from getting his... I'm calling him Lord Teak. Big Teak is coming from getting his hair cut. And he see him and he like, what's wrong with you? Because you can clearly see the worry on um, Lord Murder's face. So he like, no, nothing, you know, whatever, whatever. So they get to talking again. And of course, the conversation kind of goes to where they keep bringing up the stuff saying, you know, life is short, enjoy yourself, and all of these type of things. So it was a lot of foreshadowing for something that was going to happen later on in the episode. So, next thing kind of flips over to let us know what is going on with Mercedes. So, Mercedes pops up at Shell House. We know that Shell been out here getting drunk as a skunk, can't get up, can't handle her business. Y'all, Shell is getting on my nerves. But, y'all, she is really letting the pandemic get the best of her. So, we do find out that Shell ended up losing her job, which I like the point, fact that they're, like, exploring what happened to a lot of people during the pandemic. During a lot of people who lost their jobs, a lot of people started drinking, drugging, and doing all types of stuff, scamming, doing all types of stuff during the pandemic to stay afloat. Shell just happened to be one of those people who kind of let it get the best of her, so we know that she has become you know an alcoholic so she is just doing the most let me tell y'all something shell is really 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 getting on my nerves this season because mercedes is trying to be in her child's life now granted whatever differences you have but shell does not like she don't leave no room to be nice to mercedes at all like everything is taking a jab at her a jab at her a jab at her my thing with shell is if you didn't want to take care of the child, then you should have gave the child back to her mother. The same reason why she told us before that she was regretting, you know, even doing all this because she was trying to please her man. But again, Shell, you agreed to do that. Like, so what you keep, you know, 
fussing at Mercedes about and throwing all this shade at her because granted, your husband cheated on you. Your husband had a baby on you, okay? You did not have to agree to one, even stay with him or two, to raise the baby. Like, if you was going to have all this resentment, like, so shut up. Shout was really getting on my nerves, girl. Shut up. So the episode flashes back to the lovers out having them a date at the hot wing joint. And y'all, every time you see Lil Berta and Big T together, it's just, y'all, I don't know, y'all, it's just funny. Every time, every time, every time, every time I see them together. Because I'm like, it's, it's giving boyfriend and girlfriend. Like, I'm like, it's right in these people's face. But anyway, they out, you know getting hot wings on a little date so the waitress is really feeling big teeth she like yeah with them cute you know green eyes you got and all this and Laura murder is like shorty move around like yo go get us something to drink from the back she's like okay hater like he was getting jealous he didn't like um her complimenting his man he's like how dare you do this in front of me so so the girl walks away and he like yeah i mean that's what you want then you you know go ahead and do it little brother stop being jealous okay so why they sitting there they're talking so i don't know if y'all came to the same same conclusion that i did but i came to the conclusion that little murder is the one who turned out big t in prison especially when he was like you know when they stuffed me in a broom in the broom closet, you know, I knew for sure I was a goner. He said, but it was you in there with a bowl of pasta and a candlelight taking me on a date in prison. So I was like, yeah. So that also let me know, you know, the dynamic between them two and why, like, the you can tell that the love that they have for each other is very, very, very strong. So, you know, the emotions that's attached to those two, you know, it's, you know. So, like, throughout the entire episode, we can just see that Big T is just kind of struggling. So, we see him reminiscing on things and you can see him getting happy. And then it's kind of like when reality sets back in for him, it kind of makes him sad. And you can clearly see you know, the sadness. So, of course, this happens a lot, you know, to people who may suffer from different mental illnesses, depression, stuff like that. And even normal people, people go through stuff. So, it's time that you might be reminiscing and like, dang, I'm happy. Then you think about what you may be going through in life right now. And, you know, it make you feel sad. So, he kind of just, you know, lets murder know, like, you know, it seems like everything has moved on like everything around me has changed everything is different which of course we know he's been in prison for a very long time so that is you know a hard transition going from prison back to the real world we don't know particularly how many years he was gone for but let's just say if you went to prison in 1990 you getting out in 2020 that's you know, going to be like culture shock. It's like you got to learn how to do everything all over again, which we sing later on in the episode. He didn't even know how to pump gas. So we see that he's been gone for a long time, right? So he has to deal with all of that and trying to adapt. He's out. He has PTSD, but then they're in the middle of a pandemic. So that weighed on everybody's mental. And I know that y'all can attest to that because... Even for me, that was stressful, and I work in healthcare, so that was like quadruple stressful on top of that. So imagine you just getting out of prison, you just get out of prison, and you come into a pandemic where nobody really kind of knows what's going on, so he's trying to process that. And when we went through the beginning of the pandemic, it was a lot of unrest because of, you know, the slaying of, you know, the unarmed black men, so he's dealing with all of these things at once plus his trauma plus i'm gonna go ahead on the limb and say that murder is the love of his life plus you know that the person that you're in love with is in love with someone else so imagine trying to deal with all that at the same time like that's a lot to process so you know he just he's just feeling overwhelmed which any person would. So, I really was feeling for him. And I was like, dang, like, you know, it's crazy. So, when Lord Murder kind of see this, he like, you know, 
you know how guys is just always be trying to butter you up. So he tried to reach out for Teak's hand. And for a moment, Teak, you know, let it sit there. But then he had to pull it back. And I was like, I felt that struggle of being like, you know, how you love somebody. But you just like, you know, I just can't keep doing this with you. So he kind of, he asked him, he was like, you know, what is Cliff like? Because he knows. He like, I know you'll love somebody else. What's Cliff like? So I was talking to y'all, one of my followers, oh my goodness, Edwin, hey boo. I was talking to Edwin and when we were talking about this, I was like, yo, Big Teak is gonna freak out when he finds out that Cliff is a feminine man, is a femme queen. I was like, because, like I suspect, murder turned Teak out. So Teak is thinking that he likes, you know, like hard up men. So, knowing that Uncle Clifford is a girl, I was like, that is not going to go over with Big T. So, I can tell when they was talking, and he was like, she? He like, what you mean, she? And he like, yeah, you know, um, he like to go by she, but I just call him my, you know, my dog. So, he like, that kind of threw him for a loop right there. And he was like, okay, yeah. So, just imagine the person you love, like, let's just say you're talking about me, you, like, okay. They with me and they like, yeah, I like people that look like you, that act like you. But then they telling you, like, you know, I still want to be with you and mess with you. But then the person they in love with, they go describe them. They like, yeah, they brown skin, short, skinny, you know, basically somebody that don't look like me. That kind of make you be like. Oh, that's what you're into. So, I felt that a little bit with Big T. I, my heart was, oh, poor T. Oh, yo. The weight of the world was on Big T's shoulder. So, after that, he was like, yo, like, let's get out of here. Because it, it was just getting to be very overwhelming for oh, him. The next thing we see is Miss Keyshawn and Keyshawn's great escape. So, <laughs> yo, that goes and... And tell me, I think that he went to his parents' house to go help build the fireplace. That's what I got from him, that he, was, that he had went to his parents' house to help them. So, I guess I don't know if he's trying to, you know, rebuild the relationship back with his parents. But he said that he was going out to go do something for a couple hours. And my girl, Mississippi, said, okay, this is the time. He gonna be gone for a minute. Me and my kids is getting up out of here. So, like I told y'all last episode... She do still had a pew, pew, pew that she got from Autumn. So she grabbed the pew, pew, and she grabbed the kids, and she was getting ready to hit the road. So, y'all, the whole time while she was, you know, trying to escape, I was like, come on, girl, come on, girl, hurry up. I honestly thought that he was going to pull back up and say he forgot something at the house, and he was going to catch her. Luckily, he didn't. I was like, girl, don't. I was like, girl, up there, try and buckle them car seats, girl. Put them kids in that car and drive a little bit down Drive off a little bit, you know, slow and cautiously, but strap them in the car seats after that. Cause girl, all that time it's like you to strap them car seats, girl. Get out of there, get out of there. So she get the kids in the car seat, she strap them in. She go to get in her car to go. The thing is going <laughs> click, 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 click. So she like, why the car ain't start? She go and pop. Was that the, I think she popped the hood and Dark had took the battery out the car. Wasn't that the battery he took out the car, y'all? It looked like the battery to me. I, if it wasn't the battery, let me know what he did. He either took the battery out of the car, unplugged the alternator, carburetor, something, but Dark made sure that car was not moving. So Mississippi's plan was foiled, okay? Dark said, Not today, boo. You ain't finna drop off. Get back in. Get back in there. So, y'all, she had to go back in the house. I was like, dang, girl, I was rooting for you. I was hoping that she got away. But now we know she's just getting ready to have to, you know, reconvene, you know, and redo her plan for her escape. And we're hoping that she is able to get out. So, we'll keep our fingers crossed for Miss Mississippi, girl. We rooting for you, boo. So, y'all, it go back, you know, murder. And Big Teak is sliding around listening to slow jams, y'all. And I thought that it was so funny. Because I was like, yo, <laughs> y'all know how it be. Like, when you be asking your man, you be like, you know, I'm riding with you for the day. Y'all just be, you just be like, so happy to ride. Not me, but you know. You just be like, yeah. 
yeah, we riding around listening to music. So that's what I got from that. So like I said before, they get to the gas station, you know, and Lil Murder hears something. And he like, hold up. That sound like me. So we know that DJ Never Scared asked him to send a verse over. And we hear Lord Murder on the radio with none other than Tina Snow, y'all. So y'all know he is pumped. He get hype at the gas station. He telling everybody, like, turn your radios on. I don't know the station, but I'm going to just say 92Q because that's our radio station here. He's like, turn it on 92Q. And yeah, so they rocking out doing this and that. Some dude is beeping the horn, being a hater. So Big Teak is going off. You know, he don't play nobody coming for his man. After that, y'all, we slide over to the Pink's annual spades tournament. <laughs> where we got none other than Roulette and Whisper who is getting that money, okay? They said the Pink may be closed, but baby, we gonna shake it. We gonna get these dollars. So when it open up, y'all, Whisper... She is getting it. I mean, they is making it rain on her. And they flash over to Roulette. Roulette is getting some money, but she ain't getting rain doing like how Whisper is. So, y'all, Roulette just got this just hateful, evil, hating that spirit on her. Like, girl, we want her to get it together. But, you know, she's been through a lot, but still. So, she over there. She hating because Whisper, you know, getting that money. So, she like, oh, I'm going to show you just something. So my girl get to climbing that pole and she do some boom. I mean, she doing some moves that I ain't seen before. I mean, some tricks. She has some tricks up her sleeve. So after she do all her tricks and all that, then you know, they throwing the money on them, throwing the money on them. They pay it back over to Whisper and Whisper is just going, <laughs> just, just walking around the pole, just not really doing much. To get her money. She ain't really working hard for the money. She's not really working that hard for the money. And they just giving it to her. So I like how they kind of play on the colorism. How you know. The light skinned girl is just you know. Lollygagging around. Meanwhile the bare browner girl. Is having to. You know. Work hard for her money. She got to do all these tricks and flips. And back flips. So while Roulette is cleaning up her money. Dude walks over to her like, yeah, like, you know, what's up with your homegirl? So she like, look, I don't really think she get down like that. So he was like, look, tell her I'm going to give her 2K to eat the box. And she like, that? You won't give her what to do what? She was like, oh. She said, well, I wish I ain't had to get down on my knees and I could just lay on my back like other people. So we know what she was referring to, saying that, you know, fairer skinned girls kind of got the easy way out. So we know that she is really... You know, dealing with that. We see her in the club. She looking in the mirror at herself and all this stuff. Like, Roulette, you are beautiful. We just need you to get that little attitude of yours together and you'll be just fine. But we see her looking and when she look back in the mirror, Roulette is just, I mean, not Roulette. Whisper is just not doing nothing and they're just pretty much handing her the money. So, being that I ain't going to go back and forth about the Roulette thing. So, we know that Roulette is hooking up with... Gidget's old boyfriend and I don't think that that is going to end too well for either one of them so that's the end so of that. The next thing we know y'all the coach is ordering up Mercedes he's like look the wife wants you to come through and finish the Mercedes experience so Mercedes is trying to pay it off because we already know that the wife have already tricked her to come and they already been fool out lying around behind the coach's back, which we all knew that he was not going to like that. So Mercedes is playing it off. She's like, oh, she like, well, I just want to be with you. Like, I'm not trying to be with you and your wife. So he like, look, just do that for me this one time. And you know, we'll call it square. So Mercedes go and the wife just can't keep her hands up for her. And Mercedes is like, yo, like, don't mess up my bed. She asked her like, you know, would you mess up my, like, don't do that. So the wife like, no, I wouldn't never mess up your bag. Girl, stop lying. So she like, you know, they get to doing their thing or whatever. So the wife is really, really into Mercedes to the point where the coach take a step back. And he's just watching. And them eyes get to squinting. And he's like. Oh, uh-uh. He said, you two hussies been bumping pocketbooks behind my back. 
Y'all, he was mad. He was mad, mad, big mad, okay? So the wife jumps up. She's like, well, you don't take the time to care about me and this and that and that. And all I got from that is, see, that's why you don't let other people in your bedroom, okay? So they got all these marital problems, all this and all that. So we know that the wife got my girl Mercedes kicked out, okay? So I just, listen, I feel like the wife set Mercedes up. I feel like she already knew what was going to happen, so that's why she kind of played her to the left because I really think that the wife was not was is jealous of Mercedes, even though she keeps trying to refer to her like, oh, you just a stripper, you just a stripper, which they keep referring to a lot of them as, oh, you just a hoe, you just a stripper. She was jealous. I think she did that on purpose and got Mercedes, you know, got her the boots to the bye-bye. And I don't think Mercedes, girl, you ran out of that, but you didn't take your coins. I would have took my money. I would have took my money. Then I would have left. But I was also thinking like, Mercedes, you need to sue him for a breach of contract, girl. Did you read over those papers that you signed? Because believe me, he better was going to pay me the rest of my ducats, okay? Or Stephen A. Smith would have been talking about him on ESPN. It would have been like, yup, them, I would have been on there telling them, yup. Wait, where's my microphone? On the news, like, the coach of the Memphis Grizzlies, him and his wife, owe me money. We had a contract. I would have I told it all. I would have told it all. You gonna come up with my duckest coach. I'm gonna take you to court. Everybody gonna know your business. Get that girl her money. Don't play with her like that. Mercedes, take him to court, boo. So, while Laura Murder and Big T is riding around and getting it, they pull up to this house. And Lil Murder thinks that, you know, he's going to go get him some trees. And he's on the phone with Wardy. So, Wardy, like, you know, is Teak still around you? He like, no, nah, he ran to go get him some tree. What's up? So, Wardy is letting him know, like, look, yo, um, he can't come on tour with us. So, Lil Murder's like, no, nah, like, you know, that's my partner. I'm going to look out for him. Like, he's definitely coming on tour with us. So, Wardy is like, yeah, no, he not. He's like, and if you can't fire him, I don't got no problem handling it. You know I'm good at handling stuff. So, he was like, yeah. He's like, you know, it's a shame that I'm OD. So, Lil Murder is like, well, how you know what happened to Rome? Because everybody's trying to figure out what happened to Rome. He's like, well, you know, I be taking care of stuff. Taking care of. So, I think the real... Reason, I mean, even though, you know, Big T was doing a whole lot and he is very, you know, unhinged. The real reason I feel like he don't want him on tour with him is because they don't know where that video is and who has the video. And we know that Rome having that type of information, he has cloned this video. He has safeguarded this video. We just don't know, one, where the original is and two, who he has sent it to. Knowing how sneaky Rome is and was... Somebody else got the video, and I feel like it's going to come out soon. So, I don't know, y'all. So, when Lil Murder see Teak going into the house, he opened the glove box, and he like, oh, man, like, he forgot his strap. Like, get the strap. So, he runs in the house behind him, but we can see that when Teak is in the house, he's just kind of zoned out. So, he's just walking through the house, and he goes to this closet where he opens it, and we see that there is a small child in there who, it looks like him. So, we get that he is, you know, kind of in another dimension. But he's looking at a reflection of himself. So, at this point, Lord Murder is in the house. And he like, yo, yo, like, what are you doing? Like, why would you come in the trap house without your strap? But, what is that a trap house? I don't really, I don't know. But it's the South too. Because I was like, if it was a home that people was living in. Why would they let him in? But again, in the South, they be letting people in their house and all that stuff. So, I don't know. You know, Southern hospitality. But I was like, why would they let him just... I don't know. So, the next thing, it goes back to Andre's mayoral candidate campaign. I don't know what he was doing. But we all know that Autumn Knight gonna wiggle her way in there because she's just as crafty. And I'm not gonna spend a whole bunch of time on Autumn and all this stuff because we know our girl got something up her sleeve. So she busts in a place like she's Jessica Rabbit, looking like Jessica Rabbit. And you know, she's just in there kind of stirring the pot. 
So we know that Corbin is hot with her. Corbin is hot with her. He snatches her up and escorts her out. But while Autumn is, you know, outside, Miss Georgie, looking like Liz Taylor, looking like Elizabeth Taylor, comes through the scene. Now, y'all, we see that Georgie is off the hook. She cuts and she like, look, I ain't trying to be up in this piece and hopefully I came, you know, right when it's over. She like, because I'm not trying to stay for long. It was very much giving my presence is a present. Kiss my... Mm. So Georgie goes in there and she's like, you know, yeah, y'all messed up my deal. And Andre, why would you think that I'm going to back you as mayor when you already screwed my waterfront property for me getting my casino? Y'all, they really want this casino down here. So we come to learn that Georgie is now the owner of Promised Land Enterprises, who Andre used to work for. And we know that, we know that Andre let Autumn win the property. So we don't know what these two are in cahoots with. And like I said, Autumn is not to be trusted. But she done wiggle her way in there with Georgie. She done let Georgie know like, yeah, uh-huh, your man right here, your boy. He tried to lowball, you know, the people of Chuck and Lisa. And we see how she got really wordy with it. She let them know, like, mm-hmm, y'all know y'all was trying to steal land from poor black people in the poorest town down in the Delta. Like, come on. So, we, I feel like Autumn is probably going to get the money that she wants for the pink. I honestly do because Georgie is like, look, whatever it costs... I'm here to spend it. My husband just died. I'm the new CEO and she don't give a. So I don't know if I was, if I told y'all in the last episode, like last episode review or if I was talking to somebody on the phone, but I said that we know that grandma, grandmother, in my old clip of voice, grandmother is on her way to the upper room. Okay. So, we see Uncle Cliff and Grandmother in the kitchen. She is coughing down. She is sweating bullets. And Uncle Cliff is like, girl, what, like, what is this? He's like, your sugar is good. Everything else is good. So, he checked. And they come to his head. He like, you know what? Let me call Toy. So, he calls Toy. asks her how you feel. And she is just hacking, hacking, hacking. So, when she came and picked you know, say any words. So he was like, I knew you had COVID. I knew that wasn't no allergy. So we all knew that Toy had that Rona and now grandmother has the Rona. So I feel like Ernestine is on her way to the upper room because she's also been hinting at that the entire season. She's been making little, you know, you know, little innuendos that... She is on her way out, and then towards the end of the episode, she said something else that I was like, yeah, I was like, Ernestine gonna be the next one to go. We love you, Grandma Ernestine, and you know, it's really wrong that Toy gave you the Rona. We hope you could fight through the Rona, but I don't think that Grandmother is gonna make it. So, the next time we see Andre, he is on the phone with Corbin. Corbin is going in on Autumn. And, you know, I was laughing because I'm that friend that I'd be like, yo, do not put me on speaker. Like, my mouth is wow. You don't know what I'm going to say. Don't put me on speaker. I'm not one of the people. So, while Corbin is talking trash, Autumn is like, uh, what? Yo, Autumn had but broke in. I guess she broke in. Broke in the Andre house. And she heard the whole conversation. Everything that they were saying. So, of course, he jumped and all of this and all of that. So, we already know that these two have, you know, chemistry and tension because they've been, you know, playing with each other, going back and forth all this time and nothing ever went down. So, Andre is, like, trying to let her know, like, I let you win. I let you get this. I'm the one that's really in charge. Andre, if that's what you think, Autumn get ready to play you like a fiddle because that is a very, very clever girl. So, y'all, you know, they, Kristen... Tidal roughing old new home for Andre. And yeah, like these two, oh my goodness, there's so much back and forth with them. I'm so sick of Andre and Autumn and, and them two together. But 
what y'all think will happen with them i think autumn is really about to play him for a fool and i don't think he's gonna end up being mayor or maybe she will help him be mayor i don't know what y'all think autumn oh wait i don't know i just don't know with her so the episode flashes to Lil murder and big t sitting down by the riverside they're sitting on the car talking so we seen Big T struggling the entire episode, trying to come to grips with, you know, everything that's going on around him, all the feelings that he's been feeling, and he reveals to us a bit from his past. So we know that the home that they ended up going to that we thought was a trap house was actually his childhood home. Of course, the little kid that he's seen in the closet that was bloody was himself, so he's having flashbacks. So he lets Lil Murder know what happened in the home um, and that his mom unalived his three siblings. It was very graphic how he went into detail saying what happened. And this happened to him when he was seven years old. So he was like, you know, you know, what was a seven year old really to do with that? So he's been carrying that in his heart. He lets him know that, you know, the teardrops, we know what they usually symbolize if you're from the hood or whatever. So he was like, you know, people think this is how many bodies I got. And he was like, nah, this is for my three siblings. He was like, I got way more bodies than this. So, so as they're talking, Big T tells on murder, like, you know, that was the night that the devil got in me and it's just been in me ever since. And it's just kind of been right his back. So I read it, y'all. They be putting so much, like, symbolism in this. So, I feel like, this is just my opinion, so I feel like being that old murder was trying to, like, talk him out of, you know, what he was about to do. And he was just there trying to be his voice of reason, but also the colors that they had him in. So, Big Teak was in red. He was saying that the devil was in him. Lord Murder was wearing white, who he was trying to be his voice of reason. So, we know that red sometimes symbolizes, like, rage, aggression, all of this stuff that Big Teak had going on inside of him and also that white symbolizes you know purity and you know cleanliness all of this stuff so i was like looking at the play that they did on colors and also with him wearing the king of hearts shirt which i'm gonna get into that in a minute um so like i was really feeling this so i was like it was almost like like you ever been talking to yourself and like how you how they say you got the devil on your shoulder and the angel on your shoulder so that's really what the conversation between them like kind of missing me i felt like it was like literally like the devil and the angel and they were just going back and forth trying to reason with you know what basically was about to take place so you know after they got finished talking he revealed that to him they got in the car so he was like all right where you want me to take you at so lord murder let him know like no, I'm about to stay with you, he said, because I already know how you get. Because I do think that murder really does love him. So he's like, no, I ain't going nowhere. I'm staying with you, he said, because I know how you get when you get in your head. So, yeah, no, he's like, I'm about to do whatever you're about to do. So Teak tells him, like, yo, like, get out. So he's like, no, I'm not getting out. So, of course, we know he grabs the blicky. He... Puts it to his head. And, you know, there's, again, going back and forth, like, with this dynamic of Teep saying, you know, he's saying he's tired. He, like, you know, I've been through all of this. He said, I just wanted to see you become successful, which we know at this point he's kind of mainstream. He's on a song with Tina Snow. So, Lord Murder is telling him, like, yo, I don't care about any of that. We got more life to live. We got more money to get. Like, yo, like, don't do this. Please do not do oh, this. So, Big T tells him, like, yo, like, I cannot, I can't see the future. And, like, he told him already, like, you know, I'm going to live for today. You live for tomorrow. So, he was, he just came to grips, like, look, I, I'm done. Like, I can't take this anymore. So, when Lil Murder realized that, you know, he was solidified in the decision that he was going to make, Lil Murder was not going to leave his side. So, you know, he kind of assured him, like, you know, whatever you're going to do, like, I'm I'm here with you and I'm going to stay with you till the end. So, Lil T kind of gives him a nod to be like, you know, like, I understand. It becomes silent. Lil T, I, I keep calling him Lil T, I'm sorry. Big T does what he does 
It's a few seconds in between. And then Lord Murder jumps out the car. And he, you know, is on the ground. Because, of course, one of the most traumatic things that a person could ever witness just occurred in his face. And it's the person that he loves that did it. So, we already know that he's going to be really, really, really messed up about this moving forward. But also, I was like, I know he's going to go and run back to Uncle Clifford. Because that's also a place of solace for him. To so, process all of that, all those emotions that you got, everybody got going on, like, Big T's story was so, 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 so sad. It flashes back to Mercedes, which Mercedes is there. She drunk on her hen dog. She at the table. We can tell she tied and threw her bag is fumbled. She, she just pulled a wig off. She's so tired. She down there. Mercedes gets a knock on the door. It's her daughter, Tarka, who she's been looking for the entire episode. Shout on over. She had to shout. Drunk as a skunk. Don't know where the little girl at. Mercedes let her in. She's crying. Mercedes like, what's going on? Why are you crying? And we get the revelation that Mercedes is about to be a grandmother. Yeah, y'all. Tarka is pregnant. Tarka is following the same cycle as her mother. Being a teen mom. Well, so far, that's what we getting from it. So, I know that Mercedes is going to be really stressed out about that. And then the next thought that came in my mind was, oh, Lord, wait till Patrice Woodbine find out. Y'all know Patrice Woodbine is going to act a fool. So, the only thing that I'm hoping is, y'all know that Patrice is on her high horse now. She got this new church. I'm just hoping that she don't try to bring Tarka down in front of the congregation and, you know, cut up and carry on. Y'all know how sometimes how, you know, these Christian families and folks be trying to Say they helping you, but go and burst you in front of the whole church congregation and all that stuff. But so the next thing we hear is a knock on the door. So we see Grandma Ernestine coming down the steps, and when she opens the door, Grandma says, "Daddy, is that you?" So remember, I told you earlier on that Ernestine keeps saying all this stuff to let me know that she's on her way to the upper room because we know that her parents have been deceased for some time like grandma your um your parents is not so alive so the fact that she's thinking that that's her dad and all this stuff is letting me know that she is on her way out so of course we know that it is little murder at the door and he's like it's cliff here so uncle clever comes out of course they don't say anything because, of course, he is covered in blood. He don't even ask him what happened. He just embraces him, right? So, though this is a special moment, me being a woman, you know, I already, you know, they be trying to say women like they're wrong in the moment. But I was just, like, my thing, I was like, yo, that is so typical of a man. Like, men will be sitting there juggling two people you know, could be love this one, in love with this one, whatever the case may be. But soon as something happened with one or two one, they come and want to run back to the other one. And, oh, God. So that kind of made me mad. That I was like, you know what? He tried to play Uncle Clifford. And when something happened to him, he want to run back. And men do that all the time. They always be trying to use people. So, ugh, just, you know, stay woke so, up here. I really like during this episode that... They had Big Teak wearing the King of Hearts shirt. So if anyone knows the King of Hearts symbolizes or... Okay, so what am I going to... Right. So basically the King of Hearts is supposed to be described as a fair-skinned man. Um, a King of Hearts is a protector, you know, especially for people they love. It's supposed to be a kind, a gentle person, but also some, someone that is very fierce. So we know that all of those things were embodied in Big Teak. So I felt that that was very unique. But also, the King of Hearts is referred to as the S-King. So the what Big Teak did to himself, that king. And you can Google it also. Um, so I felt that, you know, they really be hinting to the symbolism of stuff um, 
in this episode. The next thing that I pointed out was that, you know, death, they say, comes in threes. So, so far, we had Rome, we got Big Teak, and I think that Grandma Ernest thing is going to be the next one because she looks like she is very, very, very sick from Miss Rome. So, the next thought that really came into my mind was if, Lord Murder is going to get in trouble for what happened to Big Teak. Just for the simple fact. So earlier in the episode, he did touch the Blicky. The same Blicky that Big Teak used to take himself out. He did touch it. So we know that his fingerprints is on it or possibly still on it. We know that he was in the car. So if anyone does find him, we know that his DNA is going to be in the car. And, you know, if they go back, they could look at the splatter and you can know when... They know that if it was another body sitting in there, the way that the splatter falls, right? Of course, he still had a clothes. He can burn the clothes. We know that they know how to get rid of some things down at the bank. So, I was just like, I know his fingerprints is in the vehicle. His fingerprints are on that. And he didn't call the police, of course, because he was shook or, you know, I don't know. He just went straight down. Um, Uncle Cliff House. So I was like, I hope that that does not backfire on him just because his career is getting ready to start. Um, he got the song out with Tina Snow. So, what are y'all thoughts on that? So, I think that could possibly backfire. Hopefully, in this next episode, that Miss Mississippi or Keyshawn get it together. Um, yeah, we will keep her, we will keep her lifted up. We will keep everybody in this episode lifted up in prayer. Um, what else, y'all? Autumn, y'all, we, we're just gonna hope that Corbin don't choke Autumn because he is sick of her, okay? <laughs> so, y'all, that's all I got. I ain't got no more. Drop all your thoughts, comments, predictions anything everything down in the comments and i will see you guys in the next episode well no i won't because okay next week they go on a break but y'all know stars always be leaking the episode so they're supposed to go on a break or whatever so we'll see if they go on a break i'm still gonna check at midnight because y'all know they always be leaking the episode so i'm gonna see if it get leaked um if not i'm gonna catch y'all in two weeks so next week i don't know i'm gonna drop a different video so Y'all just make sure y'all stay tuned for the channel and I will see you guys later. Bye.